In this video, we are going to look at the Stenvers tests for assessment of the shoulder girdle. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome to PhysioTutors. Movement in the shoulder requires coordinated movement of several joints, namely the sternoclavicular joint, the acromioclavicular joint, the glenohumeral joint, the scapulothoracic joint, as well as the cervicothoracic junction. Stenvers presented a series of tests to assess the shoulder girdle in 1977 and Berchi et al. in 2013 evaluated these tests on their inter-radar reliability and found kappa values of 0.63 to 0.84, so their clinical value is at least moderate. Stenvers test 1 assesses backward tilting of the scapula. In order to conduct the test, the patient is in upright sitting position and you're going to stand at the arm to be examined. Then bring the patient's arm into maximal flexion and assess whether or not the axillar hairline is in line with the inferior angle of the scapula. In a positive test, the posterior tilting of the scapula is limited if the inferior angle stays behind the axillar hairline. Stanvers test 2 assesses clavicular rotation. The patient is going to be in upright sitting position and you're standing posterior laterally at the side to be examined. Place your middle or index finger on top and behind the clavicle shaft. Then the patient's shoulder is brought into full flexion while you palpate the movement of the clavicle. In a positive outcome, the clavicle deviates from the normal movement during flexion, which is elevation and forward rotation until about 45 degrees of flexion and moves downwards and makes a posterior rotation from 45 degrees on. Stenvos test 3 assesses scapular depression. To conduct the test, the patient is in upright standing or sitting position. Then you are going to palpate for the inferior angle of the scapula. The patient then proceeds to maximally flex the shoulder. What you are going to assess is whether the inferior angle drops down 1 to 2 centimeters at around 170 degrees of shoulder flexion. Senvos test 4 assesses the cervicothoracic junction. The patient is in upright sitting position and you are standing posterior laterally at the site to be examined. Then palpate for spinous process of C7 and place the thumb contralateral to the tested shoulder against the spinous process. The patient then actively flexes the shoulder maximally. What you are assessing is whether shoulder flexion is coupled with contralateral rotation of the vertebrae in the cervicothoracic junction. Stenvos test 5 assesses the posterior capsule of the glenohumeral joint, the AC joint and SC joint. The patient is in upright sitting position and you are standing behind them. The patient then abducts the shoulder to 90 degrees and flexes the elbow to 90 degrees as well. While you support the patient's elbow with one hand, use the other hand to fixate the patient's scapula by gripping onto the lateral border of the scapula. The patient can also place their other hand in a fist on their sternum. Then move the patient's arm into maximal horizontal adduction while you keep the scapula fixated. This should be around 100 degrees. Once you reach maximal horizontal adduction, let go of the fixation and here you'd expect to be able to move another 20 degrees into horizontal adduction. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, we appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed yet, we'd love if you did so. Click the links in the video description down below or continue by watching another recommended video on the left. 
maybe you want to check out our online course or assessment products, links to all of these are in the description down below as well. This was Andreas for Physio Tutors. I'll see you next time. Bye.